Good morning, FCC. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Today is May 17th. And listen, we're almost there. We had a great time at prayer on our campus this past Wednesday night. What a wonderful time. It was good to be back in the building. And uh, we're going to have prayer this week and we'll be back in service on uh, the 24th. So we're just about there. We're praying our way back in. Uh, but we will continue our online broadcast for our online faith family and uh, for our benefit as well. So we're navigating this new normal and we're glad to be back. All right. So today we have an anointed word working on a book release called The Seven Principles of Protection. Seven Principles of Protection. What a timely word in the middle of COVID-19. Today we're going to be talking about the principle, the principle of praise, the principle of praise. There actually is a protection element when we praise God. God had God saw this day coming. He knew that we would live in a world full of corruption, full of trouble, full of trials. And uh, so God gave us principles of protection to keep us safe from the enemy of this world. So I'm excited about today's word. I want to get right into it. Uh, so if you would get your Bible and get a notepad and uh, let's receive from the Lord today, seven principles of protection today. We're looking at the, the principle of praise. All right, let's enjoy the word and I'll see you at the end of the broadcast. All right, good morning again, Faith Community Church and our online faith family. Uh, we're talking about the seven principles of protection. Today, our principle is the principle of praise. Amen. Let's get right into it. I believe this is going to bless you today. I think you're going to learn some things that we maybe haven't covered in a while. Uh, so let's get right into the word. Right, let's look at where we are right now today. Let's be relevant. Today is May 17th. We're in the middle of May 2020. Our government is literally in confusion. Uh, we have different people saying different things. We're not sure if the economy is opened or is it closed. Uh, there's 37 million people out of work right now have filed for unemployment. That's not good at all. There are predictions of more COVID-19 coming in the fall. We're in a very dark place as a country, very dark place. The spirit of death is being spoken from high places. And now is simply not the time to be unprotected, to be uncovered with all of the uncertainty and the pestilence that's in the world right now. God saw this day coming and he provided for us principles of protection for every area of life God provided principles of protection for our spirituality, our physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. God made a way for us. He provided this protection for us. We thank God for every counselor, every psychiatrist, and I sincerely mean that, but God has provided principles of protection for us for times just like these. God promises and uh, his divine protection for every believer who would choose to honor these principles of God's rule and dominion in the earth. Amen. I believe Jesus was a dynamic teacher. I believe he did more teaching than anything. Uh, but uh, for the sake of our understanding, we, we have a teacher-centered approach uh, in our ministry, and we have identified seven kingdom principles of protection. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list. There are other principles, but these are seven that we believe are seven of the top principles of protection available to the believer. 
that we have identified. Like, for example, number one, the name of Jesus. The scriptures teach that God has given Jesus a name above every other name, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. That's a powerful principle. We will talk about that one later, the principle of the name of Jesus. How about the principle of tithing? That gives us protection in our finances. The, the scriptures teach that as we have the blessing of Abraham, it will ward off attacks from the enemy from stealing our money from us. The principle of communion, communion, it provides physical healing. It's the best medicine you can take. And, and we have protection from the penalty of sin. How about the principle of faith, the law of faith? That will protect us from barrenness and being unfruitful, having a dead life. We're alive unto God when we walk by faith. Speaking, speaking. Amen. The scriptures teach that life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's a powerful principle that we will teach. Praise. Praise is a weapon. That's a principle. We can activate the principle of praise and silence the enemy. How about the principle of prayer? Divine intervention. We actually can pray and God will intervene in natural circumstances because we have prayed. These are seven principles. Again, this is not exhaustive. These are the seven that we're focused on. These will be in my book release. Today, we're going to focus on the principle of protection called Praise. These seven principles are all designed to bring protection into the life of the believer. Amen. God promised us that. We're currently in the middle of a global pandemic. COVID-19 is an example of why God gave us his rule, his way of doing things so that we can escape the, uh, the corruption that's in this world and live a life of peace in the midst of chaos. So today we want to look at this powerful principle of the kingdom called praise. Amen. Did you know we could silence the enemy with praise? Yes, the Bible teaches that whether we know it or not, there is an enemy working against us. We all have spiritual forces working against us as we speak. If you would mind, turn with me to the book of John and let's look at chapter 10 and verse 10. While you're turning there, I want to reiterate that we all have enemies, spiritual enemies. Amen. I believe we have enemies that have been assigned to us uh, to try and trip us up, to harass us. But Jesus taught in John chapter 10, verse 10, this is a new living. He said that these purpose is to steal, heal and destroy. There's an enemy right now who wants to kill your destiny, kill your dream, destroy your future. He wants to steal God's promise from our lives. Amen. If you would turn with me to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians 6. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, reading from the New Living Translation. Paul says here, for we are not wrestling or fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Now, I'm uh, not a bearer of bad news, but this is a sobering reality to understand that we are fighting against demonic forces. Paul says we're fighting against evil in the unseen world spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. But there's good news. There's good news. The good news is that Satan is defeated, that he's a defeated foe, and that God has given us principles of protection designed to enforce Satan's defeat in our lives, in the lives of the believer. Amen. If you would turn with me to the book of Psalms chapter 47, Psalms 47. Man, in Psalms 47, let's go to verse 7. This is one of my theme scriptures for my life personally. Uh, I'd, I'd use this on my website and just about everywhere. Uh, Psalms 47 and 7, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. 
Amen. God is a king. Listen, there are spiritual powers. We just read that in Ephesians chapter six. There are spiritual forces at work. But please understand that God is king. He is king and all principalities must come subject to our king in Jesus name. That's the understanding that the psalmist was speaking of. The Hebrew word for understanding in this scripture is sakal. It means spiritual insight. It means spiritual insight. It means to understand that while we have an enemy, those enemies have been defeated and that something happens when we begin to praise our God. God wants us to know and understand that the enemy is not the only one who has the ability to move in the unseen world. God wants his people to understand the effects, the effects of praise. As we begin to sing, shout, clap our hands in faith, something begins to happen in the unseen world. We're talking about today the principle of protection and this principle of protection called praise. If you would turn with me to Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. We have a powerful verse of scripture here in Psalms chapter 8 and verse 2. And this particular scripture, I'm going to read out of the New International Version. It says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established or ordained a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Amen. This is a powerful verse of scripture. What the psalmist says here is God has ordained a weapon to silence the enemy. I want to say that again. God has ordained a particular weapon to silence the enemy. If you look at the screen with me, the word silence in Hebrew is the word Shabbat, and it means to cause to fail, to put down, to take away. Amen. When we praise God with understanding and faith, we cause the plans of the enemy to fail. God begins to move in the unseen world and every plot, every scheme, every strategy of the enemy is interrupted and made to fail as we give God praise. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me to Psalms chapter 68. We see Shabbat here in Psalm 68. In Psalm 68, verses one and two, the King James says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Here in the New Living, it says, rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. Let those who hate you run for their lives. Blow them away like smoke. Melt them like wax in fire. Let the wicked perish in the presence of God. Amen. The psalmist is writing here. Every word of God is, is inspired by God. The psalmist is writing that something is happening in the unseen world. He's given us a look into the unseen world. He's saying that when God's praises go up, when the praises go up, that God's enemies begin to run for their lives, that they run, they run from the presence of God. Amen. Let's see if we can confirm this further with scripture. If you would turn with me to Acts chapter 16, Acts 16. Amen. Here in Acts chapter 16, we see an example of Shabbat, which means to cause to fail. When God silences our enemies, he causes the enemy's plans, his plots against us to fail. Here in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas are preaching. They're doing the will of God. They're going around evangelizing and doing good. And all of a sudden, a mob has formed. Let's pick up in verse 22. It says a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Amen. What we're witnessing here, brothers and sisters, faith community, is that Shabbat happened. 
Paul and Silas were thrown into jail for preaching and doing good. They were persecuted for doing the will of God. The Bible says that they were put in the innermost part of the prison. They were put in the inner dungeon. Their feet have been clamped and they are in chains. But Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises to God and something began to happen in the unseen world. The Bible says that an earthquake came and the prison doors flew open. Amen. That's Shabbat. The enemy's plans were caused to fail. They were interrupted in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you turn with me to Joshua chapter 6? Joshua chapter 6. Amen, faith community. Let's look at another witness here in Joshua chapter 6. If you're there, we're going to read verses 1 through 5 in the New Living Translation. We're going to look at another example of Shabbat, where the enemy's plans were caused to fail by praising God. Here, the children of Israel have been given a promise by God to inherit a piece of land called Jericho. And let's pick up in verse 1. It says, now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or out. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast from the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. We see here that the, the enemy's plans, even fortified walls had to come down. The Shabbat happened. The enemy's plans were caused to fail by praising God. Listen, they didn't have to do it, lift a finger. They praised God and the walls collapsed. I'm telling you, I believe that as we move forward in these coming days, as we praise God, there are some things that are going to come down. There are some plots and some plans that the enemy has cooked up, cooked up over these last few months. They're not going to work. Touch your neighbor. I know, I know we can't touch right now. Yeah, social distancing, but touch them anyway and tell your neighbor is not going to work. Amen. The enemy's strategy against God's church is not going to work. Let's turn to Psalms 149. FCC, we are racing to our close. The time always goes so quickly when we're sharing the word of the Lord. Here in Psalms 149, this is one of my favorite Psalms of all times. Every praise and worship leader should be familiar with this Psalm. In Psalms 149, it says, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your maker. O people of Jerusalem, exalt your king. Praise his name with dancing, accompanied by the tambourine and the harp. I believe Pastor Sam was asking about a tambourine. It's on the way. For the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the faithful rejoice that he honors them. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword, a sharp sword in their hands. Watch what happens as we praise God. The Shabbat happened to ex execute vengeance on the nations and punishment among the peoples, to bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with irons of chains, to execute the judgment written against them. This is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I'm ready to praise God right now. The Bible says that as we praise God, what Satan wanted to happen to you, it's going to happen to the enemy. Instead of you being bound up, instead of the plot working against you, instead of you being in chains, the Bible says that as we give God praise, as we come forth with the high praises of God, that the enemy is bound that the enemy is fettered with chains and that judgment is written against the enemy as we praise God. Amen. The Shabbat happens. The enemy's plans are caused to fail. 
That's how we silence the enemy. Listen, let's rush along. Isaiah 61, please. If you would turn to Isaiah 61. Amen. Listen, I love this scripture. I had to add this one today because we've been in a, I mean, have we ever been quarantined in our lifetime? Man, I tell you, it's been a different kind of time. Here in Isaiah 61, the prophet Isaiah, the eagle eye prophet, he saw this day coming. He says to all who mourn in Memphis, all who mourn in DeSoto County, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Amen. I believe in the King James, it says, I'm going to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. It's so important to hear from the Lord, brothers and sisters, faith community, church, our faith, our online faith family. Right now, I believe God is saying to us that it's time to shake off the spirit of heaviness. I believe it's time to shake off the spirit of quarantine and being uh, afflicted by this disease, being oppressed by this disease. We will begin to push back on COVID-19. We'll begin, instead of just sitting back, oh, another one died, oh, another one died. We're going to begin to give God praise. Amen. And we're going to see Shabbat happen. We're going to see the enemy's plans fail because we praise, we operated in the principle of protection called praise. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, listen, we did, we have done what, what we were supposed to do. The, the leaders and those in authority came and said, we need you to go in the house. We need you to stay inside. We need you to shelter in place. We need you to shut your churches down. Amen. That's what they told us. We did that. We did that. We have maintained a spirit of prayer and, and being obedient and lawful. We've been in prayer and consecration during this quarantine, but I believe it's time for us to resist the enemy. I believe it's time for us to come out of hiding and to give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God to give God praise. Upon return, we're going to shake off the spirit of heaviness. We're going to put on the garment of praise and watch God interrupt the plans of the enemy and cause them to fail. Can't speak for those who don't believe, who are not a part of the, the, the household of faith, but I can speak for faith community church and those who are in agreement with what we believe. Amen. God's going to cause the enemy's plans for our lives to fail. So I want to encourage FCC, our online faith family, and anybody who's listening, listen, as we go forward in these coming months, these coming weeks, I want to encourage you, don't, don't sing sad songs. Don't, we didn't do that before COVID-19, but don't sing sad songs. Sing songs of victorious praise, high praise. Amen. Don't offer counterfeit praise. We don't want to do, uh, you know, whatever they're doing in the world. We don't want to do the, the Tootsie slide or whatever they're doing in the world and bring that flesh into the church. But give God authentic, God-centered, faith-filled praise. Amen. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4 says, Who may climb to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those with clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. If we come and give God sincere praise and worship, God will give us Shabbat. He will cause the enemy's plans to fail. Amen. Let's look at one more scripture and we're done. Turn with me to Psalms 47, please. Amen, FCC. I have preached myself happy. I really have. Psalms 47 in the New Living Translation, verses one through three, it says, one through three, it says, come everyone, clap your hands, shout to God with a joyful praise for the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of all the earth. He subdues the nations before us, putting our enemies beneath or under our feet. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, we don't have to live our days. God has not called us to fear. We don't have to walk around wondering if we're going to be the next one to catch it. Amen. We're going to give God praise and we're going to watch God cause the enemy's plans to fail. Amen. Praise, a kingdom principle of protection. 
God knew this day was coming. He gave us a principle of protection to stop the enemy in his tract. Amen. In the face of COVID-19, I'm challenging Faith Community Church, our online faith family and those listening to put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. In your home, turn on some praise music and begin to praise our God. Amen. As we come together, we're going to give God high praise. I'm telling you now, faith community, get yourselves ready. We're not coming in with sad songs. The Bible says to come before his presence with singing, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, come into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his high name. Amen. We praise God today for his word, the principle of protection called praise. Amen. FCC, what a word. Amen. What a word. Thank God for his word, the principle of protection called praise. Shabbat. It means to cause the enemy's plans to fail. There's a reason why Satan wanted to interrupt the churches, because he knows he knows the power of praise when the saints come together. Amen. But he always messes up and goes too far. Listen, the saints are going to come back and we're going to interrupt his plans like he interrupted ours in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you enjoyed that word. I encourage you to listen to it again and again. Listen, take communion today with your family. We always take communion every Sunday. So I want you to get with your family right now and take communion if you would. And uh, listen, we're looking forward to prayer on Wednesday night. We're going to have our uh, rededication of our building. We're going to have a prayer and anointing service, and we look back to being, look forward to being back in church next Sunday, the 24th. All right. Have a great day in the Lord. Thank you for being here this morning. Get your praise on. Amen. It's time for us to go on the offensive and not just sit back and wait for some bad news to happen to us. Amen. We praise God in Jesus' name. Have a great day in the Lord. You have options to adopt something It's an option that you pay attention Hear the words written to listen This can save you from a black hole That is moving very strong Tell me what's wrong These obstacles can be optional uh. I will praise you Engagement that may lead us to temptation without invitation. Praise you. 